what is a flight path vector and how can you use it like a professional pilot. Without further ado, let's jump right into it. Hi there, I'm Gabriel from PilotClimb.com. I'm a trainer captain on the Boeing 737 and today I want to share with you all the information that you know in order to use the flight path vector like a professional pilot. Let's get started. Okay, so the first thing and most important that we have to understand in order to use the flight path vector correctly is the difference between the pitch attitude angle and the flight path angle. What I mean by that is that depending on the lift capability of the aircraft, an airplane, in order to maintain a straight level, so without descending and climbing, he needs to have a positive pitch attitude angle. That's because the wings are uh, the, the wings have a very little lift capability. Then, if we put the pitch to zero, if we put the nose of the aircraft at uh, the, on the horizon, we will start descending. So, the pitch attitude angle is the angle that is between the longitudinal, longitudinal axis of the aircraft and the horizon. Okay, so if we put the nose up of the airplane, we're going to have a positive pitch angle. If we put the nose of, on the horizon, we have a zero pitch attitude angle. If we put the nose below the horizon, we're going to have a negative pitch attitude angle. The flight path angle in the other end is the angle that is between the velocity vector of the aircraft and the horizon. I know it seems, co it seems complicated, but I will explain what does it mean. All right, so if we jump into the whiteboard here, I'm going to draw an aircraft. All right, so let me try to do the best aircraft possible. I know it's not great. Okay, so the longitudinal axis of the aircraft is this one. So it's the, the axis that goes through the plane. Okay, if I draw the horizon in here, okay, so we will see that this is the zero, okay, zero degrees, the reference. If the, if the aircraft flies along this, it's going to fly at straight level without climbing or descending. So in this case, as you can see, has got a positive pitch attitude, okay? But if the aircraft will fly in this attitude but on this line, it's going to have a zero flight path angle, okay? So flight path angle. Okay, so let's say that this aircraft in particular has to maintain this pitch attitude in order to fly at a straight level. So in this case, it's going to have a positive pitch attitude, but at neutral, at zero flight path angle. So let me do another example. Let's say that the aircraft has got a zero pitch attitude angle, so the pitch attitude angle is on the same on the horizon, but because of the lift capability of the aircraft, it cannot maintain a straight level flight. So it will start descending, okay? So in this case, this is the flight path angle. So is the actual trajectory of the airplane compared to the horizon. So in this case, the aircraft is going down with a zero pitch attitude, but is going down on the flight path angle. So if this is the aircraft, let's say, and is maintaining a zero pitch attitude, but is descending, that's the difference because the, the angle uh, of the pitch attitude angle is zero, but the flight path angle is negative. If the aircraft has got positive pitch attitude and is flying a straight level, it's going to have a positive pitch attitude angle, but a zero flight path angle. If an aircraft has a positive pitch attitude angle and is climbing, in this case it's going to have a positive pitch attitude and a positive flight path angle. The same applies to descent. If the aircraft put the nose below the horizon, it's going to have a negative pitch attitude angle and a negative flight path angle. Fantastic. So I hope this is clear. So what is uh, the flight path vector? Okay, the flight, the flight path vector tells you exactly what is your flight path angle. So in the instrument, you can see your pitch attitude and your flight path angle instantly. Let me show you how. All right, if you look at the picture here, we've got the artificial horizon of an aircraft, okay? This black information here is gonna provide us the pitch angle, okay? This is a pitch angle. 
this white line that divides the, the brown and the blue is the horizon, so this is the zero line, the reference line, okay, the horizon, and this little white airplane is the fly path vector, okay, also FPV, flight path vector. As you can see here, and as we discussed earlier, this aircraft is actually going down because it has got a negative uh, uh, 3 degrees, minus 3 degrees uh, flight path angle, but has got a positive 3 degrees pitch. So if you have, if you draw down this situation here, this is the horizon, okay, this is the horizon, this is the flight path angle of the plane okay and the aircraft it's actually descending with a positive pitch attitude okay so it's going down like that with a positive pitch attitude it's going like down like that okay and that's quite common to see when the aircraft have uh, like the Boeing 737 has got a wings that are uh, on the low speed they don't behave properly this is because the wings on the jet aircraft normally are made to fly at high speed. So when you fly at high speed, you want less drag to burn less fuel. But the problem is once you go down uh, for landing and you reduce your speed, the, prop, the lift capabilities are not great. So you need to pitch up in order to even to descend. Because since the lift is so small that if you put the pitch to zero, you will start descending in a big way. And that's why we always fly normally with the positive pitch attitude. And that's why if you if you remember last time you flew on a I don't know, on an airline jet, if you went to the bathroom at the back and, and then you walk to the front of the plane, you will be climbing because the aircraft is actually flying like that. If you didn't see it, just uh, let me know in the comments below if you uh, if you experienced this uh, this like climbing in the plane. If you haven't experienced yet, next time you fly, just go to the back of the plane and then walk in front, and you will see you will notice that you will be climbing inside the fuselage. All right. So another uh, another information that the flat path vector is telling us is the drift. Okay. So let's say you want to go from A to B. Okay, this is A and this is B, fantastic. So this is your track, pretty much, all right? So if there is zero wind, what will happen is that the aircraft will keep this heading and will fly from A to B, fantastic. But what happens is if we have crosswind from the right and the aircraft doesn't correct anything, what will happen is that the aircraft will drift and instead of arrive over B, it's gonna arrive over C. So what happened is that in order to fly from A to B in this track, it needs to apply some corrections. This correction in this case is gonna be like that because he has to apply a right correction, okay, in order to fly this track. So he will have an heading that's gonna be like that, but he's gonna have a track that is gonna be like that. Okay, this difference here is called wind correction angle. And the flat path vector also tells you where is your track compared to your heading, okay? So in this case, as you can see, we've got a right heading and a left track. So we are flying uh, with a right co correction angle. So what will happen in this case, the heading is here, but the track will have been here, okay? That's the information that the flight path uh, vector will, do, will tell you, okay? They will show you as well where your track is. Normally, this sort of information is not very useful for us because in order to use this, you need an horizontal heading scale that you find normally in the head up displays. Okay, let me know in the comments below if you don't know what heading uh, an horizontal heading scale is, and I'll explain you what it is. Fantastic. So, before moving on and going to the plane and show you in real life how do we use it and how do, should you use it, I want to uh, make sure that it's clear this thing. Okay, what will happen is. If an aircraft is flying here, okay, so it's gonna have a slightly positive pitch attitude in order to fly at straight level, okay? And it's flying at 300 knots, okay? Sorry, 300 knots. What will happen if we slow down to 180 knots, for example, all right? So what will happen is the following. An aircraft flying like this at 300 knots, because it's slowing down, it lift is decreasing so in order to maintain a straight level it needs to pitch up because if you maintain a constant pitch attitude and decreasing speed the lift will decrease so the aircraft will start descending so what will happen is that when you decelerate the pitch of the aircraft will increase to maintain a constant flight okay so what will happen is that at 300 knots if you look at the whiteboard 300 knots is, is like that and 180 knots i'm gonna uh, exaggerate a little bit just to make sure it's clear the concept 
That is our pitch attitude, okay? So it will increase. But the flight path angle, it remains constant, it's still zero. So what we'll have seen is that in this case, this is the, the pitch attitude, okay, this is the horizon, slightly below, uh, below us, and the flight path vector will have been right in the horizon because we are flying at constant, uh, at constant uh, flight path angle. But in this case, the pitch attitude will be here, okay, the, ang the horizon will be lower because our pitch attitude has been increased, but the flap and the flight path vector will have stayed constant, okay? And this is what happens when you decrease speed. Let me show you in real life what happens using a simulator. Let's jump into it. As you can see, we are on board of the Boeing 737 800NG, like the, the ones that I have been using for the last 10 years, okay? What I want to be, uh, I want you to be focused in this part here of the simulator, okay? As we discussed earlier, this black aircraft here tell us the pitch attitude, which is around three degrees, because this is 2.5, this is three degrees, and the flat path vector is telling us zero, because our flight path angle is zero. In fact, if you cross-check with the vertical speed, which is this one, is actually zero. If this white indication goes here, we have positive vertical speed. If it goes here, it's gonna, we're gonna have a negative vertical speed, okay? So now I want to show you the effect of the speed. If you increase, if you decrease the speed, you will see that the pitch attitude will increase in order to maintain straight level flight. Let's go. At the moment, we are flying at 280, 208 knots. I will decrease the speed to 180, 170, and I'll show you what happens. So now I'm decreasing the speed. As you can see, 182. The speed is here, okay? Now I accelerate a little bit the video, and as you can see here, we've got 162. They indicated, but we are still flying 180 knots. Okay, look at the pitch attitude. Uh, uh, flat path vector constant to zero, vertical speed to zero. Pitch attitude increasing. Look, now it's going into the five degrees range because the speed is going down, as you can see here. Okay, and the, the pitch attitude is now five, but the flat path vector is still zero. Okay, fantastic. Now let's go and now look at the. Now I'm gonna stop the simulator for a second. And as you can see, now we are flying 163 knots, which is 40 knots slower than before. As you can see, the pitch attitude is around six degrees, but the fat path vector is constant. And that's uh, I will discuss just in a sec just a second ago. And now, look. Now I'm gonna stop the simulator. What I want to show you is is another way to use the fat path vector. What you can do with a flat path vector, if you get established on an ALS of 3 degrees, okay, once you are established on 3 degrees ALS, if you put the flat path vector on the 3 degrees negative, you will follow the 3 degrees descent, and you don't worry about the glide slope, because if you keep, if you maintain the 3 degrees flat path vector negative, you will fly the uh, glide slope perfectly, okay? But your pitch attitude may change, maybe in the positive range, because again, the lift capability of the plane could be different. So what happens is that you're flying basically the ILS like that, okay? Your positive pitch angle, but you're actually descending with a negative flight path angle. So let's, um, let me show you what does it mean. Now we've got around, glide drop, we we'll get into the glide drop, the aircraft will pitch down, look at the flight path uh, uh, vector is going down, negative uh, one, now it's a 2.5 negative, okay? And now we've got around, yes, now we've got around three degrees negative. So three degrees pitch down and it's the same as of the glide drop. In fact, the glide drop is staying there, but the pitch attitude is actually positive by two and a half degrees, okay? So that's how, if you put the fat pavetto on the three degrees, which is between the two and a half and the five degrees, you're gonna fly the glide drop perfectly. And that's another way how to use the, the flight path angle. So this is the uh, good trick, you know, if you put the flat path, vec flat path angle in there, sorry, the flat path vector in there, you will follow the three degrees, okay? So that's a very easy way to fly in a glide slope. And that you can then cross check with the vertical speed. But the vertical speed changed with your uh, ground speed, so you need to change the vertical speed constant, but if you maintain the three degrees on the flat path vector, it, no, you don't have to cross check which vertical speed you have to use with a ground speed because that's three degrees and that's the three degrees you're gonna fly all the way down. All right, now 
In this last example, I want to show you that if you look on the instrumentations of the aircraft, we have in here on the navigation display on the top left, we've got 31 knots crosswind. Okay, so the wind is actually coming from here. In fact, the aircraft is applying a right correction to uh, fly the same localizer. Okay, as you can see, uh, as you can see here, the flight path vector is telling us that the track or the localizer is on the right compared to our heading, okay? So in fact, if you look outside, let me pull down, this is the runway, okay? The localizer is like this, but the heading is actually pointing in there, and that's because we've got this 31 knots crosswind, okay? So that's another information that flat path vector can tell you, but it's not very useful. To be honest, I never use this, the flat path vector in this situation to check how much uh, is my wind correction angle, okay? I've never checked, I just check it to put, normally I put the flat path, uh, I use the flat path vector just to make sure that I'm flying constant, uh, straight level, descending with three degrees of climbing and descent, depending on how many degrees you want on your flat path angle. So I hope this video was clear for you. If you like the video, subscribe to the channel because I'm doing one video per day, so you will not miss the next one. Leave me a comment below with your question. What do you think about the, the video? And if you have been, if you have ever used the flight path uh, vector. If you go to pilotclimb.com, you can check and subscribe for free pilot training content. And I'll see you in the next one.